Taji, welcome to the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry. Thank you. It's great to have you. Great, thanks. You are a part of a faculty of an Ivy League school and you continue to, to work on next generation storage and memory technologies. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and, and your experience in the industry? I started as an engineering student at a school in Massachusetts. Uh, so engineering, electrical engineering and computer science is already in my blood. So I've been doing this for quite some time and I've actually worked both in the uh, industry and also in academia for quite some time, over 30 years, and spans over 30 years. So talk a little bit about what makes you so excited about Optane technology, Optane DC SSDs, and Optane DC persistent memory. This is the technology in terms of storage is going where there's a blurring of short-term volatile memory versus, you know, slower persistent memory but that I said wouldn't that be nice if you can if you can all sort of merge all this into one well interestingly enough as you know uh, Intel has 3d NAND technology for high capacity data center SSDs we have Optane data center technology for uh, super fast SSDs at the caching layer and then we have Optane data center persistent memory for uh, high bandwidth memory applications of up to three terabytes uh, per socket and so that allows you to tier your storage, so you can put your hot data as close to the CPU as possible, right. as close to the memory as possible, right. and then you have capacity drives. How do you apply that at your leading university? I personally have to support about 60 different researchers and also about 25 different uh, faculty, and they all individually have different types of research going on, anywhere from uh, climate change, applied math in the uh, AI, machine learning, uh, anything that actually is, has to do with modeling and predictions. So we actually end up generating lots and lots of data. So the fast storage is always a, as a requirement. But at the same time, you know, there's a lot of collaborations that goes on between the uh, uh, researchers and faculties in different universities across the world. So we have to keep them for a long time. I'm not talking about a couple of years or, or the government regulated, you know, seven to ten years, but we still have to keep them for a fairly long time. So how do you actually, you know, have the combination of fast storage with also the large amount of cheap storage? So that's always been a challenge, you know? Tell me a little bit about the future. Where is it going from here? So obviously, you know, we're going to be incrementally replacing things, you know, with the SSDs, with the Optane technologies, because we need a ba much better, fa uh, faster uh, IOPS. So we need that. So we'll be able to do that today. But beyond that, you know, we're always hungry. It's like it's almost like a hungry child. It's never enough, oh, wow. right? So uh, the amount of data that we're handling is growing exponentially. So in order to be able to handle this amount of, a large, vast amount of da data, we're talking, you know, 60 terabytes per scientist times 60 times whatever. And so we're going to end up eating up a lot of a traditional amount of storage, but we all have to keep them, right? So the so petabytes, well, well, exabytes, zettabytes of data. We already have a couple of ter te pe uh, petabytes. Wow. We already have that. But that's actually slated to grow even more, and we can't throw those fundamental data is away because as a scientific community, somebody also has to be able to validate our methodology. So they're gonna use our data to be able to validate. So we're gonna have to keep these things for, for long term. Tell me a little bit about how you take advantage of, of, of the Xeon, uh, the Intel Xeon scalable processor family. Well, I mean, most of our, actually, as, as, as a matter of fact, all of our uh, servers and the desktop workstations run on the Xeons, and different family, different uh, vintage of Xeons. But the scalability is absolutely the key because I think what people may not realize is that you know you really don't want to go full force at whatever the highest power at all times, because we don't, we may not need that. And the power consumption is also a concern as, as, as well. So when we don't need it, we scale it down. When we need it, we fully, you know, ratchet up. And I think the scalability is, is the key. And just like anything else, and you know, if you don't need it, just turn it off. Right? That's right. So That's we, right. we have the ability to do that. So talk a little bit about the cultural shift of managing these big memory and storage data sets inside of your organization? How do you manage 
the demands. Well, you know, it's like it's like the captain, you know, the, the, the Star Trek movie, you know, when the captain asks, you know, the engineering says, the captain, this is all I got, you know. You know <laughs> they always want more, and I can only give them so much more. But if the technologies go beyond what we already have, and like what the, you know, Intel's new technologies are coming up, it, it fundamentally changes our computing model, so we can actually be a bit, little bit more, I should say, bold in terms of our experimentation. They're kind of racing themselves, you know. I mean, we, 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 we don't know when the discovery happens, so they're very impatient, but they're also competing with other organizations, other institutions. Who are fighting for those same research dollars. Exactly. You know, so, so there's always a, a sense of urgency. You know, so if the computing infrastructures can change all that, better. Right. We're also talking about Intel Optane right. Data Center Persistent Memory, right. which is a next generation memory technology that has the ability to scale up to three terabytes per node. Yeah, well, we want that. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys have already have enough team of people who can actually help us do that. So that's, you know, that's the relationship, not just the product, but you also have the backing of these experts that can help us what we do. So that's probably why we actually have you know, a trusting type of relationship with Intel. Well, it's our honor to be a trusted partner of uh, an Ivy League university that does applied mathematics. Now we just need some of those PhD students to come work at Intel when they're done. I think they already do. <laughs>